Welcome in baseball fans to another edition of the MVC First Pitch, where we drop in with a head coach from the Missouri Valley Conference, and it's Wes Carroll's turn from the Evansville Aces. Uh, Skip, I'll just turn it over to you to begin with, your overview of the first 19 games of the season. You're going to have to wait a little bit to uh, start Valley play. You still got a couple non-conference weekends to go, but just your assessment of the first 19 games. Yeah, it's been a roller coaster ride up and down. Uh, we've shown uh, that we can play some great baseball, and we've shown uh, that we can be inconsistent in areas. Uh, put together a very challenging non-con schedule uh, for our team and our club, and you know we're really confident going into the season. And um, you know we get sideswiped and ambushed down there at NC State, a very talented team. You know coming off a, a College World Series run, uh, and they had a lot of mojo going and. Ran to a freshman named Tommy Tanks down there that that kind of put his face on the map of college baseball. And so uh, and then rolling into, you know, Vanderbilt next week, that's four really tough games out of the gate. Um, and, you know, just kind of threw us on our heels, uh, trying to figure out what our identity as a, as a team is. And then we kind of found our footing and we started playing consistent baseball. Um, and, you know, it starts on the mound for us. I feel like we've been getting some great starting pitching that's been giving us a chance. Uh, and then our defense has kind of really come along after those first couple weekends uh, where we just weren't taking care of the baseball. We started to really solidify our defense uh, and, and doing the necessary things in order to uh, have success. And so uh, pitching and defense kind of let our bats get hot and we carried a good four game winning streak. Um, it was unfortunate. You know, we came out flat yesterday. Uh, but if you look at it, the schedule has been challenging. What I've asked our guys to do. Uh, we're in the midst of a 13 game road trip. That's really uncommon when it comes to college baseball, uh, especially for us, because I feel like weather wise, we're in a good spot. But uh, I just put the schedule together a couple of years ago, uh, trying to, you know, really get bolster our RPI uh, going up against great competition and on the road. And so uh, I, I think we'll see over the next couple of weeks, um, especially when our pitchers get back to a normal schedule. Uh, I think we'll we'll start hitting our stride and showing consistency in all three facets of the game. It's interesting you brought up the, the NC State weekend because you didn't exactly ease into the schedule by playing those guys. But then we fast forward to the Tulane series. They were off to a hot enough start. They were nationally ranked. You go into New Orleans, have to play three games in two days. Not only do you win the series, you sweep them when they were nationally ranked. Obviously, you have a good long ride back to Evansville afterwards to celebrate a little bit. But did you talk to your team about now maybe there's expectations on us? We're, we're kind of the hunted. We've got the bullseye on our back. We're the talk of college baseball, at least for one weekend. And if you did, how do you think they handled that? Absolutely. It's about, you know, we got a taste of what we're capable of doing and that taste of, you know, social media and national coverage kind of showing that, hey, you know, this is a, a good team that we've put together and that we can play at a high level when everybody is clicking and feeding off one another. Um, and what we saw there that weekend was just, you know, great overall pitching performance. And then our bats, we just had consistent at bats, just uh, guys really battling with two strikes, got a significant amount of two out RBIs. And we it just got contagious hitting, just got contagious. And, and it shows that we do have, guys in our lineup um, that can have a lot of success in this in this conference and just overall uh, the feel was great mojo great momentum I just think we you know coming back from Tulane having a midweek on the road where we kept it going at Austin P you know this past week at a Northwestern we sat in a hotel for two days dealing with weather and then dealt with a 18 inning double header um, that just got got sideways on us double headers we've had multiple double headers or many double headers this year and just like during the Kobe year they're so darn challenging and tough and so uh, we're going to regroup and and continue to uh, you know figure out what exactly is our identity because all you want to do with your non-con is get prepared for Missouri Valley Conference play. Individually before the season started and when we did our preview we talked to I talked about Tanner Craig and he was a guy that was coming back for you from last year. And anytime you return a dozen home runs and 47 RBI, you feel like, great. I got a guy in the middle of my lineup I don't have to worry about. But as you guys and the Tanner himself figured out from one off season to the next, boy, it's not automatic and doesn't just carry over, does it? He had an interesting off season. He sure did. You know, last summer, um, 
you know, he got diagnosed with UC ulcer curriculitis where uh, he lost a significant amount of weight and strength. And, you know, going into his final season of baseball at the collegiate level, obviously he has goals and aspirations to play in the next level. And I believe he can, um, you know, those dreams and aspirations of thinking baseball's done with me are going through his head. And it was a really, uh, you know, a good eight month battle and struggle to get his overall strength back. And I think going into the season, whenever I saw him come back from Christmas break, I just saw the weight back on the strength gaining each and every day, you know, it was really uplifting, um, not only for our, our, our team, but just I think for him, I think he's in a really good mental state right now where, you know, when the game gets taken away from you, you appreciate it a little more. And I think his overall mental approach has been outstanding this year. Uh, and, and, you know, he's got real quiet feet right now, being able to see the off speed. And he's really put himself in a position to have a great year. And he's producing and performing. He's also two away from tying our school home run record and three away from uh, breaking it. And so that just tells you just how seasoned of a veteran bat he is and how he's developed as a college baseball hitter. Um, where he's starting to really spray the ball to all fields and, uh, you know, just a special player in our program, leader, and uh, what a great young man that's got a bright future ahead of him. Speaking of a guy that came back with aspirations and expectations, Shane Gray uh, pretty much anchors your starting rotation. Uh, the Northwestern series notwithstanding, he kind of had a bum shoulder, but hopefully and figures to be all right. But Nick Smith has kind of emerged. I don't know if emerge is quite the right word because Shane Gray casts a long shadow considering what he's expected to do coming back. But Nick Smith has really pitched in for you too. Yeah, it's great to see both of them. You know, they were back-to-back -back pitcher of the week in the Missouri Valley Conference. And, you know, to have a solid one-two punch that gives you a chance each and every weekend um, is, is a great position to be in when you're going to the Missouri Valley Conference play. And, and you know, Nick's still a young, a young arm in our program that's developing and, and you know, going through – the you know the weekly kind of up and down grind that it takes and you know he, he's a guy that just nothing really gets to him he's an even keel guy he's an uber competitor inside and so just to see him be able to fill up the strike zone up until yesterday uh, has been great to see um and then Shane you know preseason get a lot of accolades uh he goes out there and and you know gets ambushed by NC State with 10 earned runs um you know for him what he's done over the past couple of weeks uh, it's been pretty impressive to, you know, lower his ERA, but most importantly, give us a chance. And that's that's what you want in your starting pitching, to get five to six innings deep into a game where it's a close ball game where your offense can hopefully uh, do something and your bullpen can kind of shut the door. And in a, an era where you want swings and misses and missing contact and missing barrels, you guys, at least your pitching, doesn't seem like has lost the side of the fact that you need to throw strikes. You guys are throwing it over the plate generally. Absolutely. I mean, that's what you got to do is you got to win the freebie game. And, and if you can, you know, fill up the strike zone, hitting's tough. It's very challenging. And, and I, I think, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, pitching staffs really kind of focus on. And, and with our defense, we're okay to, to get some soft contact. We're okay to get some contact. So I feel like we have an infield defense that um, has a lot of range, has a lot of talent uh, and can make plays behind our pitchers. And so uh, we've had some, you know, big double plays that have helped us get out of some, some innings, especially at Tulane. Uh, but our, you know, our, our pitchers, that, that is the main focus of, of working ahead and, and obviously filling up strike zone. Big Ten flavor coming up for you the next couple of weeks. You're going to have to wait a little bit for Missouri Valley Conference play, but uh, you don't exactly ease into that either because SIU comes to town here in about three weeks. So best of luck to you, Wes, and thanks for dropping by. Hey, thanks so much for having me. All right, coming up on the next MVC first pitch, Joe Healy from Baseball America will drop by, and we will talk to each of the coaches one at a time as Missouri Valley Conference head-to-head -head play is just around the corner. That's the next MVC first pitch. Stay tuned.